morning and welcome to my home in Everberg. Hello to those of you from St Paul's. Hello if you're joining us from anywhere around the world. And a special welcome if you found us for the very first time. You're joining us today for a celebration of Pentecost when we remember that the Holy Spirit was given in great power to the early disciples. So please feel free to join in very enthusiastically with all the prayers and the songs that we're going to share today. But let's start by reminding ourselves why we are gathering to worship like this. Please say together, God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we come to you at the start of a new week. We come to you bringing our joys and our sorrows. We come to you knowing that your fingerprint is on each soul, that you have carved our names on the palm of your hand. God, creator of the galaxies, nearer to us than hands and feet, we come to worship you. Jesus, loving redeemer, Risen, ascended Lord, we come to worship you. Holy Spirit, our encourager, come to us, fill our worship with your power and your love. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sustainer. Amen. of the risen and ascended King. But we are also human and sometimes we make mistakes and things go wrong in our lives, individually and corporately. Let's confess our sins to our loving Heavenly Father. 
Please say the words in bold. When we have hidden our faith, scared to speak out for what we believe, protecting ourselves from hostility and conflicts, liberating God, forgive us and set us free. When we have shut others out of our lives, without any reason, excluding those who are different or strange, preferring the comfort of being with people like us, liberating God, forgive us and set us free. When we have closed our minds to new possibilities, refusing to take the risks of exploration, saying no to the adventure of mission, liberating God, forgive us and set us free. When we have hoarded what we have, keeping our resources under lock and key, refusing to share the abundance of God's generosity, liberating God, forgive us and set us free. Merciful God, you love all that you have made and welcome us with open arms, even when we fall short of your purpose for us. Forgive us our failings and help us to begin again, made whole by the embrace of your love. Amen. welcoming Dominic, our new chaplain, in the summer. And we're trying to spend this time getting to know him a bit better before he actually arrives. So here's how he answered some of your questions this week. Hi there, this is Jen. Um, I wondered if you could tell us what would be a great day out for you and Annie. A day out with Dominic? Um, going somewhere nice on a picnic. My favourite day out? obviously is what Annie wants to do on a day out together but actually I love what she said so that's fine. So my perfect family day out uh, will be day of skiing, probably starting in Montjean, uh, skiing down to Champéry, then up and over into Avoriaz 
uh, and carrying on the whole circuit round uh, until you can get uh, back from Chatel back into Mulder and that would be a fantastic day out. What's your favourite cake? And what's your favourite book? <laughs> oh, you're going to walk me. <laughs> My favourite book is Harry and the Buckful of Dinosaurs. Would you like to do me first? Would you like to do me first? My favourite book is the Aragon series. My favourite book is The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the late film. You're so bad. Yeah. This shows me maturity, okay? If you cannot do this without yeah. laughing, that shows you're immature. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll run Can down. you just keep rolling and edit it? Ask me the question. <laughs> it's good for years. <laughs> My favourite book is The Inheritance Cycle, and I love it because it is a really imaginative story, and I like fantasy. <laughs> I thought long and hard about what my favourite book is, and I think there's been a lot of them that have come in and out, but I'm going to go for Winnie the Pooh. Um, I just love the characters and I think I'm a bit of an Eeyore, <laughs> really. I think Eeyore's great. Uh, I'm also uh, a bit of a Pooh Bear, a uh, bear of very little brain. What do you love most about your current church? I thoroughly enjoy our toddler group, Little Feet, uh, but it's closely followed by my Sunday school class, which is full of six, age six to eight year old boys. Uh, I loved the community and the age range between it. I most love the youth work in my current church. I think what I love most about a church here is the staff team. It's just great working closely uh, with people, uh, meeting with them week in, week out, praying together, reading the Bible together, growing together. That's just really, really good. Uh, and sharing too what we're good at and what we're not good at. I think probably that's closely followed by uh, wardens as well. I've had some great wardens here. It's been a real, real delight just to work closely with people. And I think I said earlier that 11-16s, just having the Sunday night discipleship group, we've had it in our house, uh, currently have it in, in our church building at the moment. That's just great um, and certainly one of my favourite parts of the week. Thank you for those answers, Dominic. And remember, if you would like to ask Dominic a question, just send it on a short video clip to Nathan at the address on the screen. Now I don't want to give anything away, but we're about to have a very special Bible reading. And then Nathan will preach to us from God's Word. Our reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. En er verschenen aan hen een soort vlammen, die zich als vuurtongen verspreiden en op ieder van hen zich neerzetten. En alle werden vervuld van de Heilige Geest en begonnen op luide toon te spreken in vreemde talen, zoals hun door de Geest werd ingegeven. A Jérusalem vivaient des Juifs, hommes pieux venus de tous les pays du monde. Quand ce bruit se fit entendre, ils s'assemblèrent en foule. Ils étaient tous profondément surpris, Car chacun d'eux entendait les croyants parler dans sa propre langue. Sie entsetzten sich aber, verwunderten sich und sprachen: Siehe, sind nicht diese alle, die da reden, Galiläer? Wie hören wir sie denn, ein jeder in seiner Muttersprache? Ndi Pazia, Nandi Midia, Nandi Elam, Nandi Bina Mesopotamia, Ndi Bikwanime Judia. Na Cappadocia, Nime Pontos, 
a esia ni me fria na pamafilia ni me egypt na kokulibia de sirene nso nando bia sina rumbia mandi ju mandi ne suzo ndi ju ndi crete nandi arabia Aina anoka hane kuo kunaso swanyi banyiru kolu ni nenke chineke. Zongyan wanja kinga mai mong di si hao. Bei ti shu. Zhe si shamo yi si. Ling yau se ya ge siu shu. Oh, ta mun si kap san zau guan zai liu. Nato powstał Piotr Wiazidan Stama podniósł swój głos i przemówił do nich. Mężowie judzcy i wy wszyscy, którzy mieszkacie w Jerozolimie. Niechże wam to będzie wiadome, dajcie też posłuch słowom moim. Albowiem ludzie ci nie są pijani, jak mnie macie, gdyż jest dopiero trzecia godzina dnia. Hechos 2, versículos 16 i 17. Mas esto es lo dicho por el profeta Joel. Y en los postreros días, dice Dios, derramaré de mi espíritu sobre toda carne, y vuestros hijos y vuestras hijas profetizarán. Vuestros jóvenes verán visiones, y vuestros ancianos soñarán sueños. Los anteriores no era. Nguri wana pa mabasa ya wapostori. Kisa kujichipiri, uvabandi mai gumine sere. Kushkata gumine fumbu wangwe. Napa msuru pa waranda wangu, napa msuru pa washandiri wangu. Nisha dura rungwe ya wangu, na mazwa iwa yo. Wacha poro fita. Dicha ita zunusha misa kudenga kumsoro. Nisha ita zuba nika pasi. Rupa nu moto ne mute yo utse. Vangeli nwa pere rapana. அப்போஸ்தலர் நடபடிகள் ரெண்டாம் அதிகாரம் வசனங்கள் இருபது மற்றும் இருபத்தி ஒன்று கர்த்தருடைய பெரிதும் பிரகாசமமான நாள் வரும் முன்னே சூரியன் இருளாகவும் சந்திரன் இரத்தமாகவும் மாறும் அப்பொழுது கர்த்தருடைய நாமத்தை தொழுது கொள்கிறவன் எவனோ அவன் ரசிக்கப்படுவான் so we're, we're celebrating Pentecost today, and this is a bizarre way to celebrate, isn't it? It's kind of like having a birthday party, but not being able to have the people who the party is for around with you. And there have been lots of birthdays happening over the last three months that haven't been able to happen physically, but distantly like this. But it's taught us one thing, isn't it? Or reminded us something, that the church is more than its gatherings on a Sunday. That actually Pentecost as the birth of the church can still be celebrated even though churches around the world are not able to gather together. Because actually what is it that makes the church? It's the people. But more specifically than that, it's the people who God has poured his Holy Spirit into. And that happens the moment people say yes to Jesus and turn to him. He fills them with his power. So we say that Pentecost is the birth of the church, but more than that, it's a celebration of God pouring out his Holy Spirit on all of us. It's a decisive moment in the history of God. It's a decisive moment in the history of the church. And it's a decisive moment in our lives when we receive the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at the very first Pentecost, look at some of the things that they went through and try and think about what does that mean for us and what our experiences and our response to God pouring out his Holy Spirit. The first thing to look at is that Pentecost was expected. They're expecting it. Yeah, the timing wasn't known but they were expecting it. The passage tells us today is that that long passage there from Joel where, where Peter stands out in front of the crowd, having been filled with the Holy Spirit and the disciples with him. They go into the streets. They think, who are these guys? They're crazy. They drunk. And he goes, no, we're not drunk. And actually, this isn't some bizarre, wacky thing we're doing. This is something that the prophets foretold. And he reads from Joel, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. What we have seen in the past until this moment is that God poured out his spirit on specific people for specific tasks for a limited amount of time. 
but now he's poured out his Holy Spirit on all flesh. There is no discrimination, no men, no women, old or young, educated, slave, free, servant, whatever, all people. God will pour out his Holy Spirit on. And Peter says, this is it. This is what's happening. Something that has been talked about. But Joel wasn't alone. Isaiah prophesied that there would be an outpouring on all God's people. Jeremiah prophesied that um, they would take uh, the law and not just write it on tablets, but write it on our hearts as well. Ezekiel prophesied that God would pour out his spirit and give them a, a new heart. The prophets foresaw this day. And Peter is there saying, this is expected. What you're seeing now, what you're witnessing now, this is, this is what, what we've been hearing about for hundreds of years. It's not new, it's not crazy, but be expected. The disciples, they were told by Jesus to wait. He told them that he was going to send something to them, a companion, a helper, the Spirit. And they were told to go and wait. So they were anticipating something. Queen Elizabeth II, uh, the British Queen, and ascended to the throne on the 6th of February in 1952. But she had to wait over a year before she was coronated and where she made her, her vows and the Archbishop anointed her and blessed her. And she was formally given her royal power. She had to wait a whole year for that. Contrast that to the king of Belgium, who just one hour after his father abdicated, he was sworn in and was given royal power. The trouble is that often we as Christians, we're not living as if we're expecting the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we're kind of like Queen Elizabeth, but we're not just waiting a whole year, but we, we wait our whole lives without receiving or, or accepting the power that we have, that God has given us. We go through life without expecting God to do anything in us or through us to transform the world around us. But it's to be expected. It was prophesied long before Jesus. When Jesus came, he promised it. And then through the book of Acts and the rest of the New Testament, we see the impact of people who are filled by the Holy Spirit and what they can do. Therefore, we too should expect it. We should expect the Holy Spirit to be at work in us, transforming and changing us so we can be part of God's plan to transform and change the world around us. It's something we should anticipate and expect. The disciples did as they were told. They waited. They were anticipating, as I said, something to happen. And when it did, it was experienced. It was deeply experienced. It wasn't some kind of of an allergy or it wasn't some kind of theoretical thing that happened. It was a genuine experience the filled with the holy spirit and they were set ablaze with the fire of god j oswald sanders who was general director of the overseas mission fellowship previously known as china inland mission he wrote this to be filled with the spirit means simply that the christian voluntarily surrenders life and will to the spirit the meaning filled is not to pour into a passive container. When we invite the Spirit to fill us, the Spirit's power grips our lives with this kind of strength and passion. It's not some kind of theoretical thing that goes on, but it grips us. It, with its power, it gives us strength and passion. It's an experience. Something happens within us. We are changed. We are different because we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. For the disciples, that first Pentecost, they could never forget it. It was tangible. It was real. It was an experience. When you are filled with the Spirit in that kind of way, you know where you are when it happened. 
They were in the upper room. You know what time it was? It was nine o'clock in the morning, we're told. You know what you saw? They saw what looked like tongues of fire landing on people's head. They know what they heard. They heard a violent wind. You know what happened? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what difference it made? They went out into the street and they had boldness to proclaim Christ and in different languages. You know the impact it has. Lives around them were changed. 3,000 people drew to them and gave their lives to Jesus and started following Jesus that day. Having the Holy Spirit in our lives makes a real difference. It's, there's a tangible change. When I, I talk to some of you who came to faith as adults, you talk about the transformation that God by his Holy Spirit has done in your lives. The difference is made, turning anger into peace, hate into love, pain into forgiveness, meaningless into purpose. And it could go on and on about the difference that having the Holy Spirit in your life makes, the experience of change. I grew up my whole life always knowing Jesus. From as long as I can remember, Jesus was part of my life because my parents took me along to church and, and faith was part of it. So I'm grateful that I've always known Jesus. I've never had that before or after moment to compare myself with because actually my, my whole life has been centered around Jesus. But there did come a point where Jesus did take more prominence in my life where I realised for myself that actually I want to follow Jesus, not just because it's something our family does, but me, Nathan, this is my choice and I'm doing it. But I'm so grateful for God because he did give me that kind of Pentecost moment because I could never see what difference faith really made to me because I'd always grown up with it. I had a, a real experience of the Holy Spirit and I can say where I was. I was similar to the disciples, I was in an upper room at Winchester Vineyard Church. It was at seven in the evening and there were about ten of us praying. There was no fuss, no hype, no emotive music, just sat in a room praying for one another and then the Holy Spirit came and filled me, I had a real tangible experience. Kind of, I felt like I was shaking, I don't know if I was or not, but I felt like I was, and a real sense of peace, and an overwhelming reality, knowing that God loved me, just kind of filled me. It was a genuine experience. Actually, at the time, I was studying theology for my first degree, and I was wrestling with my faith. Is God real? Is this all made up? Is this something that I just believe because that's what I was taught when I was a kid and I just accepted it? All these questions. But I could not deny that experience. I couldn't put it down to anything else. It wasn't dodgy food. There was no hype, as I said. There was nothing about the atmosphere. The only explanation for me was that that was God filling me with his Holy Spirit, giving me that real, tangible experience. Now, whether you've had that moment or whether it's been more of a gradual thing in your life having the Holy Spirit transform and change you it's a real experience you should be able to look back and see the difference that is made in your life the change the transformation that God has done that real experience of seeing the Holy Spirit at work in your life but also not just in your life but the way it sends you out. It was expressed. So we've seen that the Holy Spirit was to be expected. We've seen the Holy Spirit was experienced. And that's my third point, that it has to be expressed. What happened to the disciples when they were filled with the Holy Spirit? They poured out onto the streets, proclaiming Jesus. They weren't proclaiming their experience. That was just the fuel that allowed them to get going but they talked about Jesus when I had that encounter with the Holy Spirit for the first time in a real tangible way actually I just wanted to tell people about Jesus for the first time in a new way I just had a desire to share my faith it gave me a boldness 
to go and do it. It gave me a, a hunger and a desire, not a guilt trip that I probably had before, but I generally wanted to tell people about Jesus. The experience changed me and I knew that I was loved and changed. The disciples went out and they expressed their faith. An encounter with the Holy Spirit isn't just something to make us feel good. Or the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not something just so we go, oh, thank God that I'm being changed. That is good. But so we can express it. So that we can go out. Remember Jesus, before he ascended, he told the disciples what they must do. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, go in into all the world, make disciples and baptise people in his name. He said, but wait, because I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to empower you to do it. The Holy Spirit is given for a purpose, not just to make us feel great. I'm so thankful that it does. But it's given to empower us, to equip the church to do God's work, wherever that may be. For some of us, that's equipping us to to do church, to equip one another, support, to reach out. But for most of us, the Holy Spirit is given to empower us in our daily lives to do the work that God has given us to do there, to proclaim Jesus, not just by what we say, by what we do. It has to be expressed. A friend of mine was on a, a mission or doing some talks in the Netherlands, I think it was. He was talking to some guy and he was um, high up in Ikea. And he'd either led a country uh, of Ikea stores or a particular store. But he was saying that actually he treats his job as if he is a pastor for the people uh, who work under him. That he and his store or his country, whichever he had oversight for, they had the highest yield. They had the, the highest turnover, the biggest profit margins. All these things across all the Ikea stores, they reached the top level and they had the highest worker satisfaction. And his explanation was, I'm a pastor. I do my job professionally, but it's the Holy Spirit who makes me a pastor for the people I work with. The Holy Spirit in his life was expressed in the way he did his day-to-day -day life. We have to make sure that we are expressing what the Spirit has done in us. A.W. Tozer said, the Spirit-filled life is not a special deluxe edition of Christianity. It is part and parcel of the total plan of God for his people. The Holy Spirit descended on that first Pentecost, not just for though that select few and only them, but for all people, men, women, old, young, servants, everyone, filled with the Holy Spirit. But I'm going back to a point that I made earlier. So often we as Christians, we live in that time period, like Queen Elizabeth II, she was ascended to the throne, but she had no power. Or to put it a different way, we live in the time we're trapped between ascension and Pentecost. We know that Jesus has been exalted. He is Lord of our lives and we've said yes to Jesus. We know that he has died for our sins and that he has risen again, defeating the power of sin, defeating death in our lives. And we know that if we say yes to him, we will be forgiven because of what he's done. We know all that and we've exalted him and placed him as Lord of our lives and we follow him. But yet we're trapped between that moment and Pentecost. We don't live empowered lives. We don't realize that God has poured out his Holy Spirit into us because he has. And often it's our blockage that we either actively resisting God wanting to change us and transform us and work through us to change the world around us. Or actually we just kind of ignore it unintentionally and don't seek and expect God to work in us in that way. the Holy Spirit in our lives, just as on that first Pentecost, is to be expected. It's to be experienced and it's to be expressed. 
my challenge for, for us, for the church today, wherever we are, in whichever country, is are we expecting the Holy Spirit to work powerfully through us? We may think that we can do nothing, though who am I? But actually it's God power in us that transforms us and the world around us. Think about those first disciples. They were uneducated, unsophisticated fishermen. And some men and women who have followed Jesus. And they were nobodies, really. But in the course of 300 years, it sounds like a long time, but it's not, they transformed the Roman Empire. They transformed it. Think about how many millions of Christians are around the world now. If we would all receive the Holy Spirit, allow the Spirit to work in us. To just think about the transformation that we could make in the world around us. One final thought as I close, and it's a reminder really, because I preached on this a few months ago. The Holy Spirit is not an inanimate force. It's not some kind of weird power, but a person. And so experiencing the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, is actually allowing a person, God, into our lives more fully. I think about two weeks ago where I talked about the character of God, and I talked about the kindness of God. The Holy Spirit is God. All the kindness of God in the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is God, poured into our lives. It's nothing to be feared. It's nothing to be scared of, but to be embraced because God is a kind God. Yes, we might not all like change. And actually, we know that there are areas of our lives that need to change, but we don't want to. We don't want to face them. But actually, God is loving and kind and he'll do it gently. And as he's doing that, he will use you and empower you to transform the world around you. Before we sing our next song, actually, let's just be still. And in the stillness, wherever you are, let's just pray that prayer if you're ready. Maybe close your eyes, to cut out the distractions or whatever else is going on in the house around you. And just be still and pray, come Holy Spirit. For some of you, the first step to receiving that life-transforming, world-changing power in your life is to say yes to Jesus. To say, I've heard some stuff about you and I want you in my life. To say, actually I know that I need forgiveness and I want you in my life. And the moment we give our lives to Jesus, God says that he fills us with his spirit. So for some of you, that's what you need to do now, is say yes to Jesus. For others, it's just a case of saying, acknowledging, God, I've ignored you and I'm sorry. Come fill me with your spirit. And for others, it's kind of, do you know what? I'm running this race and I'm loving it, but God, I would love more of you in my life anyway. That's a great prayer to pray as well. So let's just be still. And in a short time, the music will begin. Come, Holy Spirit.
church we miss you very much but hope that you are safe and well this morning i'll be saying three short prayers let us pray during this challenging time we thank you lord for your protection we thank you for your provision and for your strength that you give each and every one of us we thank you, Lord, that we can meet as a church, even it be it virtually. And we thank you for the weather, for the beauty of your creation. And we remember, Lord, that you are good and all good things come from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this Pentecost Sunday, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We pray, come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and minds afresh with the love and power of Jesus Christ. Embolden us to live out our faith and speak up for your church. And we also pray, Holy Spirit, you may be now working in the hearts and minds of our new chaplain, Dominic, and his family, as you prepare them for their next chapter of ministry here in Belgium. Bless them, Lord, protect them and ready them for your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thirdly, Lord, we pray for all those grieving loss at this time. We pray for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for protection and strength all those caring for the sick and lord i always want to ask that you protect strengthen and be ever so close to our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world remind us that persecution is as real today as at any time and i pray for your protection and rescue for all our afflicted brothers and sisters Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
you're very welcome to join us for coffee and there will be prayer ministry available at 12.30. And the link to both these events is in the email you might have received and on our church website. Looking further into the week, there is our first Wednesday prayer meeting on Wednesday evening. And again, the link is in the email and on the website. Now, although we're worshiping virtually at the moment, the ongoing mission and ministry of our church continues, even though it's not perhaps so visible at the moment. We're very, very grateful for everybody who contributes to the financial upkeep of our church via bank transfer or standing order. If you would normally make a donation in the basket, please could you consider making a bank transfer? It would be truly appreciated. And now over to Nathan. Thanks, Bess. I've got two quick announcements uh, for children and their parents in Splash, maybe five to 14 year olds. The first one is that on Wednesday at four o'clock, we're going to have a Splash Minecraft event. So if you're in Splash and you know how to play Minecraft, then you'll want to go on our website and download the information to find out what we're going to do. It's experimental, we've not done anything like this before, so let's just give it a go and see what happens. But the basic concept is that we'll all be invited into a Minecraft world, have a chance to play, then we'll gather together in our Minecraft meeting room, we'll explore the Bible together, and then we'll go and do an activity in groups in Minecraft related to the Bible story. So get your parents to download the information and you need to register for it before Wednesday. The second one is about VBS Vacation Bible School, our summer holiday club. This year it's going to be virtual like many other things. More information about that will be coming out later in June for registration in July. So keep an eye out for that and get on our website and download information about our Splash Minecraft event on Wednesday. Thanks Bess. Thank you to everyone who's taken part in our service this week, both those on screen and those we did not see. So to Helen for admin support, John for music production, Paul for his work on the sermon, and Nathan for editing the whole service together. And thank you too for those who helped out without any recognition. Let's finish our service by blessing one another. Go on your way this week to witness to the living God in spirit and in truth, whatever the coming days may bring. And may the blessing of God our Creator, the risen Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer be with us and empower us today and every day. Amen. <laughs>